my goodness, the Redskins suck. The Jaguars couldn't get it done. The Buccaneers are farce. Are farces. Can, is farces a word? I'm making it up. Six after the hour. The only team around here worth a damn is the Magic, for crying out loud. Um, I, if you could see us tonight on YouTube, I don't even have a Redskin jersey on. That's how upset I am. But I've got something even more upset to talk about right here on the Sports Crunch Rock 100 DIZ.com. Six after the hour with your boy, the captain, 888 860 Or hit us up a request at rock100diz.com. My buddy that's normally to the right of me, Paul Hollywood, if you're watching it from at home, Paul would be sitting there. Paulie is in New York City. Ooh, wah, ooh, wah, ooh, ooh, itty. Look at Paul Hollywood. He's in New York City. Like that? Paulie, where you at? I'm in New York City. Okay, see. see I'm ready pa- to have some New York strip steaks. Nice, nice. Did you get any pizza while you were up there? Yes, I did. So it you was did, very tasty. So you did get some pies. Did you yeah, go to... I was on... Uh, I hit all the major landmarks. I was in Times Square, Rockefeller Plaza, and ventured over for that big game yesterday between the Giants and the Jaguars in the new Meadowland Stadium. Yes, yes. We're going to talk about that shortly, but... On the phone, we also have Jonathan Buds- Budsdecker from the Orlando Sentinel. And people, I got to get, first of all, let's give him a nice round of applause for being on the show with us on such a short notice. Jonathan wrote an article that was posted on the station's Facebook page in regards to the Turkey Bowl game that was canceled here in Orlando by our own Orlando Police Department. Now, folks, when I read that article, I exploded. It was like the day I got my divorce. I was so mad. How in the hell can the city of Orlando waste the manpower to go out there and stop a bunch of guys playing a football game? I, it, it boggles my mind. And, and Jonathan, I want you to tell everybody exactly what happened and tell them about your article. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'll start on sort of from the beginning. I had met a guy named Ricardo Griffin. He's a guy that actually grew up in Paramore, which if you aren't from here in Orlando, Paramore is kind of a, a mostly black, low-income, kind of high-crime area. And uh, But he had grown up there, and for years and years and years, he played in this football game called the Turkey Bowl. And it was a game that they held on Thanksgiving Day, and uh, the whole community came out. It was a free of charge. It's kind of an informal game. And uh, they just played football all day on Thanksgiving. So when he grew up, when he when he grew up, he uh, he wanted to keep kind of with that tradition. And so this year, I had met him one day, and he told me all about this game. And he said, "Why don't you come out and and do a story on it?" I said, "Well, that sounds great." And so I uh, I kind of lost track of him for a bit, but then I found him around the week of Thanksgiving, and I called him. And I said, uh, "I'd love to do a story on this turkey bowl." He said, "Well, it got canceled this year." So he he went into this whole story about how. Um, they had wanted to move the Turkey Bowl to a different location because the city didn't think it was right for where they had been playing it for years and years. And at one point uh, in late October, about four weeks before the game was going to go on, uh, Ricardo got a bill from the Orlando Police Department for like $7,000 um, because they said that they had to need, they needed to shut streets down need to patrol the area, and that $7,000 was uh, nine police officers at holiday pay. So because it was kind of late in the game, um, Ricardo and his buddy Stacy, who was helping organize the event this year, they just said, well, we we can't afford that, so we're going to just cancel it. So they ended up canceling the official Turkey Bowl, which uh, was kind of a community event, and um, they said that now, just because our, our our official game's canceled doesn't mean we can't go out and play football on Thanksgiving. So about 1 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day, um, I had to work, so I was going to cover this to see uh, whether or not anybody showed up. I went out about 1 o'clock. There's four guys in this field, um, mostly in their 30s and 40s, and I was there about 10 minutes, and uh, the police showed up. Uh, one police officer came in, and he told these four guys, look, you guys don't have a permit to play on this field. You can't play on this field. You can't play football on Thanksgiving here. And so, you know, they complained a little bit, but they said, look, we're not going to get arrested over this. And they and they walked off the field, and about 
10, 15 minutes later, by the time they were just kind of hanging out, there was five more police officers uh, around the area making sure that nobody was going to play football on this field on Thanksgiving. People, do you hear this? This is absolutely preposterous. I mean, Paul Hollywood, what would you do? What, what, what are your well, thoughts when you heard them? I, I find, like, you know, really, you know, me and you, you know, we, we've been down to Citrus Bowl quite a bit. In fact, since we were just covering the Tuskers, and you think about it, the Tuskers season was over. You have that field over there right across from the Citrus Bowl there. That's huge. And, I mean, you're talking about it in, in fence there where they could have had people in there. I mean, I don't know how many people they draw to this thing, but you could have probably had a couple thousand people within that thing because you have things there where they had, when they had the classic there, I mean, they had booths set up with tents and people driving cars cars and everything, so there's nothing that they could have had that day that they could have played that game on the field in that area there that these people could have done any damage whatsoever. I agree with you on that too, pal, but I'm telling you, something needs to be done, and I would love to uh, have Jonathan get a hold of those two gentlemen that were involved with this um, event. And let's see if we can't help them put this together for next year. I'd like to broadcast this live on the Internet. Probably get used of a politician. Get used of a politician. You know, they talk about they want people to, you know, be active, like the NFL pushes up play 60 and all that. And these guys actually want to do a clean, you know, family-oriented sporting event, and they're stopping it for me. And this is in a depressed area where there's a lot of crime. It won't even let people play sports in a bad area. What do they expect? You're absolutely right, Paul. Both of these guys, these organizers, I mean, I don't think they were against paying these, paying the police officers this money to, to patrol the event. It was almost for them. It was just so late in the game, and they didn't even know that they were going to get slapped with this bill that they couldn't even come up with the money in the first place. And, well, I, think, and, and I'll be honest, I think that money is really, for people that, you know, don't make a lot of money, it was, a lot, it was really an outrageous oh, yeah. bill. And they had been playing this game for almost 40 years in, in, in Paramore, and so it wasn't like a new thing. And so I, I feel like the city in, in 2009 or 2008 or whenever could have said, look, in, in next year or in two years, you guys are going to have to get some police protection. This is how much it's going to cost, but we're going to tell you 10 months out, so that way you have 10 months to do fundraisers, find sponsorships, and, and we'll work with you. We're not just going to slap you. I don't think it's bad to say they have to have a thing where they have to play cops. What do they, what do they get on a holiday rate, 75 to to $100 an hour? Uh, the sergeants get $58 an hour, and the officers get $53 an hour. That's on an overtime rate? Uh, it's holiday pay, yeah. Oh, okay. And they, and they were all working 12-hour shifts that day, according to this yeah. invoice. Well, the, uh, so they have to pay for a 12-hour shift, even though their game won't be more than three hours? Well, no, the event is an all-day thing. It starts at 9 a.m. And, and gets done almost at 9 p.m., so they they would have used them most of the day. Well, it was like a multiple thing where they have multiple tournaments of teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, okay. they start with kids who are in like the you know fifth, sixth grade, and they do in a, a teenager game, and then I guess they do like the old timers get out there and try to play. Well, the best thing for these guys, what I, I think, they have to probably see if they can get help of a politician, and also see if they could get a corporate sponsor that you know that would promote that thing, and I think they would probably have enough money to pay for all that. Well, it all, take on it anyway. well, no, it makes sense to me, and this is why I wanted to talk about it before we, you know, got into our usual routine about the NFL and college football and the NBA. This is something that is local. It's affecting uh, the inner city, and it just makes absolutely no freaking sense to me. Go bust well, the think, bad guys. I think they probably should get a hold of some county commissioners or somebody in, in the county government or city government. And I think they could probably pull some strings for them and probably get them a little bit of a break, too, that they wouldn't have to pay that much money. You know what, Paul Hollywood? Yeah. I think you're on to something. Why don't, when you get back, let's get a hold of the Orlando Predators, and let's see if the Preds would let them play, like, halftime at a Predators game in the new arena. How would that sound? That sounds like a winner to me. Jonathan, what do you think about that? That sounds like a good idea. I'm sure they'd be happy to come out. Okay, I'm going to work on that. that, that that's going to be my gift to the guys because I used to play in, in turkey bowls and I think everybody has played football when they were kids. Uh, 
in a turkey bowl uh, type uh, environment. And well, they had it on, on the day, on Thanksgiving Day, when the Patriots played Detroit. Tom Brady did it when he lived in California. So it makes <laughs> it makes no sense to me to sit there and and to tell these these people that they can't play football. Oh, go play basketball, but you can't play football. I mean, what the hell is that? See, this sounds crazy to me. Yes, and your buddy Leon just sent in a uh, uh, an email saying that uh, police state tactics. It's called command and control. And on that note, we'll be back to talk about the church of the NFL. Jonathan, thanks for being on the show. And Thank we're going to talk. Me. Yes, and we'll talk with Paul Hollywood live from New York City right after these words. Do you know you can listen to this station via your cell?